Hi everyone, and welcome to our channel. Welcome to Lesson 2 in our series entitled 3D Modeling for Newbies. We're going to continue with the lesson about how to create components in Aspire. So we open a session of Aspire and I randomly draw some ovals. I can select all the ovals at one time by simply dragging a bounding box around them, or I can choose to use the control A to select all of the vectors. Within our create shape, I'm going to use the dome profile, a little bit of base height to it, a little bit of shape height to the components. And you can see the end result. and there's our component in the component tree. But let's make some changes. So we'll delete that component that we just created, and now we'll go in and selectively choose some of the vectors, still using our dome profile. We'll create one component. We'll then go and create another component from other selected vectors. Again, they need to be closed vectors. We'll change the shape height. This time we'll set the property of this component to merge. We can go back in now and make another component out of some of the remaining ovals. Adjust the shape height or the base height. Again, setting the component property to merge. And we'll select now the remaining vector. Adjust the shape height or base height. The component property is set to merge. And we'll close. It's a little different. You can see how the components are stacked up. I'm going to select all those components, change their property to add, and it becomes a dramatically different looking component. You can see where they overlap. The pixels are added to one another. If we change them back to merge, they blend together. That's the lesson here is that the component property really does impact the end result. Let's try something different. Let's try looking at one of the models within the software and see if we can figure out how it was done. We're going to choose the bunch of grapes. The grapes look awfully familiar. The grapes were just created by using circles. I can select all of the circles, choose my dome, adjust my shape height and base height if need be. This is going to be one component, so the property isn't necessarily important, but we'll set it to merge anyway. I've decided to leave in this video the actual rendering time of the 3D component just to show you that sometimes your computer may take a while for it to generate the component. Depending upon your modeling resolution, your machine may be slower or faster. You can see that the component is at an even height. We can now adjust that if we wanted to within the component properties by changing the shape height or by changing the base height. Again, the shape height pulls it up from the top. The base height raises the entire component up. 
It's an easy way to get a comfortable looking piece, but I'll show you what my approach is. I create a new level, making sure that it's the active level, so no matter what I create will go on that level. For me, a bunch of grapes is more three-dimensional, more like the arch. So now, I have to choose which are the lower of the grapes. I like to build my models from the bottom up. So these vectors I consider to be the grapes that will be at the lowest Z. I choose the dome again, set an appropriate shape height, set this component at merge. I click on the create new component, select my second set of grapes. These are going to be a little bit higher in the Z. Create another component from selected vectors, the third layer of grapes. Again, the component property becomes important. These have all been set to merge. And you continue this process until you're comfortable. Choosing which vector should be included in the next bunch of grapes sometimes can cause problems. But you work your way through it. And there's our bunch of grapes. Let's take a look at it with the leaf. It has a little bit more depth and dimension, wouldn't you say? It's the same circles that we used before, but just a little bit more dimension. That's the original. And this is my version. Now let's take a look at that other option we've been referring to, the fade and tilt of the component. I'm going to create a component from the rectangle vector that I've drawn. Simply a dome. I want to have a total of five of these components. Now I'm using the mirror option by simply flipping it up you can also do copy and array, you can do copy and paste. There are several different ways to get around this by making extra copies. This just happens to be one. And again, within the component tree, we see how those components were listed. Starting at the bottom and then building and building and building. I'm going to choose the fade first. You set your anchor and your intensity of the fade. So I click on the left hand side of the component, drag my cursor to the right. I'm going to use the maximum fade and the end result is that it will fade down to nothing across the entire length of the component. But let's just say I click on the left hand side and only go halfway through the component with my cursor. You can see the end result is that the fade started on the left hand side and went directly to the point where I left off, the center of the component, and then it flattens out. Let's try it one more time. I'm going to go from the center of the component and extend my cursor out to the right. The end result is that the fade starts at the center. Wherever I set that anchor is where it starts and goes down to whatever degree of fade I want. The tilt is slightly different. I choose the tilt option, I click on the left hand side of the component and drag it all the way across as I did with the original fade 
and you can see the component has been tilted up. Let's just choose our second option. I click on the left hand side, I go to the center of the component, and the end result is that it's exactly as the first one. There's really no difference with the tilt option of how long you should drag your cursor across. The anchor point is the most important. But let's just say I want to go from the center of the component with our tilt to the right hand side. What will happen? We're going to do full strength again of the tilt. Now the component goes below the modeling plane. I refer to the anchor point in the tilt as kind of the fulcrum, like a seesaw, when we choose it in a different position other than the left or the right side. So, how does this play into the real world environment? Well, let's just take a look at an example. We go into the clip art, and I'm going to bring in one of the models of a fish. Make it a little larger so we can actually get to see the end results. I'm going to drag it and position it where I want to and I'm going to make a copy of it. Just like everything else, there's a couple different ways that this can be done. I simply chose the Control C, Control V, copy and paste option to create my second fish. That second fish, I'm going to choose the tilt. I'm going to set the anchor in the center and I'm going to drag my cursor across to the left because I want the head to tilt up. You can see the head is higher, the tail is lower. This will cause problems if you try to cut it because now the software thinks you want to cut the entire fish and your material may not be thick enough. I'm going to use the replace below option. This will effectively remove any part of the component that is below your modeling plane. It's interesting, but how does it play into real world modeling? Well, let's add some texture some water. I've chosen from the library the water clip art. But the water was added to the fish. If we look at our component tree, we can see that the water was the last one added and it was set to add. So of course the texture was added to the fish. I can adjust it by simply moving the water to the bottom. Back to my logic of I build from the bottom up, so the water would have been first, then the fish. We may need to adjust the fish, especially the first one, because it's a little bit underneath the water. But certainly if you were doing a group of fish jumping in your design, use the tilt and fade. You can create some interesting effects. Let's try one more as an example of creating components. I drew my vectors of my triangles. I chose to create a shape of a pyramid. The component property was set to merge. I then select my second set of vectors my smaller triangles and create a flat shape from them. Again, the combined mode or the property was set to merge. I have a third vector, a crescent shape that I choose the pyramid option within the create profile shapes. This time the combined mode or the property was set to add. And my last component is simply a circle with a dome shape and I create the component. That was set to add as well but it doesn't look right. There's something amiss. So I take my last two, my domed shaped circle and my crescent shaped pyramid and I move them to the bottom of the component tree. So the crescent shaped pyramid was added to the dome but the triangular pieces were set to merge. So now, what you've learned in this lesson is that you can not only create jumping fish, you have the ability to create the sun and the moon.
I hope this gave you some information and some ideas of how you can create components to create real-world 3D models or how you can adjust the existing ones within your software. If you want to learn more about the Vectric software, subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the little bell so you get a reminder of the upcoming lessons. And if you have a question, send me an email, mm at mazalik.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Enjoy.